What's up, YouTube? Tonight, I'm going to answer the Matt Graham bushcraft challenge, and we're going to see if we can build an atlatl and dart, and we get to throw it at a target of our choice. Hey, Matt, you think you could outthrow me? All right, so first thing, I'll show you guys some of the tools I'm going to use for this project. I've got some chert bifaces here. I've got a little drill. That's going to be important. Some different knives, uh, saws, whatever you want to call them. Just different chert bifaces, different sizes with different edges. Uh, I got a couple of good ones here. And just some plain flake tools, right? Really sharpen the edge. I would use this as kind of a wedge. Uh, not, I wouldn't say an ax, but more of a wedge to split the hickory stave I've got here. Kind of a warped, well-seasoned bow stave, or would have been bow stave. It warped some well-seasoned hickory, I mean, <laughs> some well-seasoned river cane. I cut these last year. They're looking good. Some deer antler, white tail, and, and a, a tusk from a hog I harvested last year. So I'm gonna get to work. Welcome back, y'all. I just wanted to show you the finished product. I, uh, I didn't use the, the hog tusk. I, uh, I instead, I opted for deer antler. It just worked out a little easier with the design I had in mind as far as fitting on the end of my, my atlatl. But this is it. Uh, that's the spur there. Uh, flattened it out pretty good. I got it pretty wide. Right? A lot of work, but I bet it's going to be worth it. I really thought about putting my uh, a banner, a weight on there, but I was so tired. I just decided, you know what? This is this would be just fine. I've killed hogs for less, right? So anyway, that's that's my atlatl, and here's my dart. Yeah. Turkey feather there. It's about six and a half foot, and it is a river cane dart, like I showed you guys earlier and a removable foreshaft. That's the point I napped. Pine pitch resin, the new. Same thing holding my feathers. I don't know if you can see it very well. Hope so. Anyway, challenge accepted. Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, just before I take a couple test shots with this Adelaide, I wanted to show you a little bit about cordage. Uh, I don't know what this vine's called, but I've had really good luck with these, and I find them you know, next to the creek a lot, anywhere there's a lot of huckleberry growing, and uh, we're going to use a stone knife, <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to strip this down and see if we can make a little cordage for the handle of our atlatl. I've got a little bit already made up, that same vine I just showed y'all. It's not the strongest fiber, but in a pinch I like it because I don't have to do a whole lot of processing. It's not the prettiest job, but again, if this were a survival situation, that would more than do the trick. Strong, it's flexible, so here's how I got it. I'm going to take my vine, strip the foliage off of it the best I can. Now the the bottom end is kind of is woodier, but it's a little bit stronger. But I gotta process it just a little bit more to get the twist I need. And I clean it up a little bit. I leave some of the little tags on the nodes because I find that they kind of help. At least in rough quarters, they kind of help hold it together. But here we go. Another thing I really like about this is it's pretty easy to get long fibers. Not that there's anything wrong with weaving it in, just for sake of expedience, I really like this. So, you gotta, you gotta break this up just a little bit. And I find that's the easiest way to go about it. I just kind of check it and make sure I didn't miss any spots. All 
All right. So here's how I get started. One end I leave longer than the other. Now I could use sinew, like for the dart and for the adlal itself, but you know, it's uh, what I'm using this for on the handle does not require that much strength, and there's a lot of processing involved with sinew. You know, you, I kill a hog or a deer, I'm gonna get quite a bit, but you know, it's got to be dried, pounded out. If I were in a in a survival situation, I mean, this is not a that would not be a first night project. You know what I mean? All right, let's get started. So, I fold it over itself at the beginning. Uh, I'll often make a little loop there. I don't, I don't have to, I can leave it pretty tight, but the basic premise is this. That'd be a better place to start. So, away from myself, and then you fold it under, and you then pinch it. And with a little bit of practice, you can get pretty quick and this is this is good to keep yourself occupied like at night if you were sitting around your fire uh, idle hands all that so I won't bore you with this whole thing but I will do a little section just so you guys can see how it works out so I twist away from myself and I fold it under and then I pinch it to hold what I've got and it comes out looking like a rope. I guess the way it works is ultimately you've got fibers twisting yeah, opposite one another and they kind of hold together or hold each other together. Welcome back. So, finish the handle up on my Adelino and I've got a stump set up a little bit downrange behind me here and I'm going to take a practice shot to see if I can hit it. Got it. Let's see how my dart did. I was hoping to hit a little higher. I'd say that did pretty good. Awesome. Hey, thanks for stopping by, everybody. Uh, appreciate you guys spending a little time with me in the southwest Louisiana river bottom. And I uh, hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.